February 7th, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time from here on in. I shoot without a script. See if anything comes of it. First shot, Andrew, opening Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Hello. Hey everyone. <laughs> that was a remix of the intro to Ren. We're here. We're here for the musical theater references. We're here to sing today. And we're here to do textures today a little bit. Yeah. So those are all things that you can usually find in any one video. It's true, yes. It's just normal. <laughs> At yes. Adobe Live. That's, yeah, it, it's super on brand for me. Like a little bit of show tunes, a lot of bit of texture, huge brand systems, and just everything's black. Yep. Yeah, so this is day <coughs> three. We've been live for two days so far. And if you haven't caught those broadcasts, you can definitely go on the replays. They're all on YouTube, so you can definitely watch everything. And even if you're just joining today, it's gonna to be totally worth your while. Yeah, it's gonna be super fun today. Um, a couple things real quick that uh, we wanna jump into from yesterday. Um, someone in chat yesterday asked, we've been working a lot with this gold foil texture that we made the first day. Mm -hmm. um, and a silver foil texture is a part of our brand system we've been building out. Those are free, they're on my Instagram now in the link in the bio. Um, someone asked for them yesterday and I have thusly delivered. Okay, um, great. You can use them if you want or you could watch the replay and you could learn to build them yourself. Learn to fish. I'll teach you guys. That's true. You can make your own. And then you can make like silver foil textures or green foil textures or rainbow foil textures. You can do whatever you want. That's, I don't know. That's a little too extreme. The future's out there, guys. I'm a little scared of that. Jump into it. Grasp it. Um, let us know where you're from when you're joining. Good to see some familiar faces. Carmen, Munir, Jimmy, Julia, Hello. David, Mirel. Thomas from Germany. Oh, hello, guten Tag. Hi. Hi, Lou. Shana. Lou, where are you from? Lou Angelou. Angelo. Ang Angulo. Angulo. I don't know. That sounds, I, I would definitely write a story about someone who has your name. It's a very interesting <laughs> name, I like it. Uh, hey, Ray, what's up? Oh, so many people from Germany, hello. I was yeah. just there this summer hanging out in Munich. Uh, I had a breakfast in Munich. It was. Fantastic. Just the breakfast? Just, I just flew through and we were there for like five hours and so um, I had a breakfast and I was like, yay, stamp I've for Germany. I've had breakfast in Munich too. I've also had other meals. I've Vietnam, Sri Lanka, hello. Ireland, Chile, Oh, Texas. Kathleen, hello. Is that O as in like, oh, or is that O-H as in uh, Ohio? She's from Ohio. She's why, oh, why, oh, why, oh. There's songs about everything, guys. <laughs> so this week, um, we're on day three. Do you mm -hmm. know what that means? Portfolio reviews. It's portfolio time. That's so right, guys. I want you to make sure that you submit your portfolio. We're gonna pick two to review today and we'll look at them in depth. We'll give you some feedback. You have Andrew here who has very valuable feedback to give. Here so I am. It's very exciting. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna be looking uh, through the portfolios and we've talked the last few days, if you missed any of the streams, uh, a lot about the why behind building out a brand system. Uh, we talked a lot about visual communication. We've talked a lot about how to tell a story using images. And so uh, as I look through those portfolios, there's gonna be a little bit of like, I like it, or maybe I don't like it or whatever it is. But most of all, we're gonna help you guys communicate and uh, kind of look through those and see what stories you are telling through your portfolios. And I'm so excited to look at those portfolios. I love seeing other people's work uh, and being able to speak into it. Yeah. Cool. Hi, Simon from Bristol. I went to university in Bristol. Good to see you. Yes, and I had a, a bit of coffee this morning and I also <laughs> ate an apple. So I'm feeling healthy oh, an and I'm apple. feeling fit and I'm feeling that excited. That explains it. I was wondering why you're talking so It much. was. It was a golden apple, <laughs> which segue into our project that we're working <gasps> on. Oh yeah, gold. Uh, we are here. Give me all the gold. That was one of my favorite segues that's ever happened. <laughs> golden apples, gold foil, you makes totally sense. Made it. it works, yeah. Um, so we've been working the last couple days on this brand identity system for uh, the credit awards. If you want to look over our creative brief, we'll be talking about it a bit at the end of the stream. Um, but if you want to look over, again, it's in my Instagram, in that link uh, in the bio. Mm -hmm. You can scroll through, check it out. But the main idea is that we're building out 
a brand identity system for an award show for those that exist kind of behind the spotlight. So I'll read the brief, uh, just the kind of key messaging copy real quick. We've done this at the beginning of each day just to get everyone on the same page. And then today we're going into textures. We're gonna start playing around with some awesome textures. So what we're working on is this. The credit awards are a night of recognition for those who are only seen as names on a screen. You won't find A-list stars or gold draped tables. They're the X, Y, and Z list of Hollywood, the behind the scenes behind all those scenes. From best caterer to best best boy, we're here to celebrate those shining behind the spotlight. So that's the idea that we've been working on uh, and putting things together. To just a quick recap, this is kind of what we've been working on the last few days. Exploring um, visual communication by using these different elements, putting th them together, trying to uh, come up with a mark, but more so a system that works together that contributes and tells the story that uh, we wanted to. So as we look here, we see that we've kind of landed on this idea and uh, this, these elements that are like credits, right, rolling on a screen. Mm -hmm. And so we've talked through kind of how we do that uh, and build out a system. We started to see that this system works with some of our other key copy, which is always great once you have those elements and start putting them together in other ways, it continues to work. Um, and we've talked a little bit of this idea that a bad idea with a good application is still a bad idea, but a good idea with an okay application, still a good idea. So we wanted to spend a lot of time coming up with that good idea uh, and then mess around with the applications. And I think that we're in the okay zone of applications. And today we are gonna turn it up to, uh, let's turn up to 14, that feels nice. Uh, and we are going to elevate this to great ideas with great applications. Uh, and so what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you guys some uh, texturing techniques. When we look at our inspiration for this project, we looked at a lot of inspiration uh, like this. Let's see if we can zoom here, there we go. Uh, a lot of inspiration like this, kind of old film titles, um, a lot of this kind of stuff of credits coming in. And today we're gonna work on creating something for the credit awards that exists within the system, but has like a little twist on it, right? So I like to do little, once we build out the brand, do like a little variant. Um, no, you cannot handle 14, Jimmy. Uh, and it says you're already at a 12. So it's true. Maybe we, you can go higher. Than we were course. working our way up, guys. It's it's going to be crazy. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be actually uh, taking a lot of what we talked about yesterday and building on top of it. Uh, in the challenge yesterday that we looked at, um, it was all about layers. You guys did an amazing job working with layers. And today we're going to move out of Illustrator, which we've been in the last two days, mm -hmm. and into Photoshop. And we are going to go layer crazy. Um, we're going to keep building and building and try to achieve a look that's similar to this stuff that we're seeing in the inspiration. Yeah. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Amy. Make sure you uh, stay tuned after our stream for the Hood Sisters. So Amy's in the chat. She's getting ready. And they've been doing an amazing job building a brand identity system. So if you haven't checked out their whole segment the last two days, you can also watch their replays. Yes, definitely stick around. Uh, I've been watching them each night or live after, and they are absolutely incredible. All right, so we're gonna start out, uh, we're in Photoshop, and we're just gonna make an artboard, uh, 1920 by 1080. It's a standard screen size. Um, I like to work on that just if we're doing something uh, to explore a little bit. And as we build this out, um, we talked yesterday about the idea of building this creative pantry, right? That we wanna take elements and those kind of become layers that are ingredients that we're using to make our uh, visual dish. So let's look back at some of this inspiration real quick. And here, when we look at this inspiration, uh, this is how I'd love for you guys, as you look at projects, as you're trying to learn, try to dissect it. So we look at this and the elements that I see that are communicating to me is we have this nice black and white image that's back here. That might be a back layer. Uh, it looks like some of the edges right up in here are kind of fading in, right? Has that kind of vignette on it. And so that might be another layer on top of that. Um, then we have this type. The type is probably at the front, right? But it's got that glow on it. So it feels like maybe it's, you know, stacking up with that glow. And then if you can see, there's this little shadow here that might be sitting right behind that type. 
So it helps me when I look at something like this in my brain to almost take it and try to pull it this way and then turn it to the side. Um, yeah. And it's like think, a chef who's tasting something and then they have to find the ingredients yes. that it was made of. Yes, it's that moment when you taste it and you do like the weird like thing where you're like. Yeah. Like that, but you're doing it in your brain and with your eyes. I don't know what the <laughs> eye equivalent of that is, like, but. Opening yeah, and closing your eyes. It's, yeah, a lot of blinking. <laughs> yes, a lot of blinking. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to recreate this same look by using layers and using um, a whole bunch of tips and tricks in Photoshop uh, that I am going to show you right now. So let's start out, uh, and we want the background, again, we want the background to kind of be something for this that fades in, that feels like it's kind of that old vintage film title. And we did this with our gold texture, but we're gonna do the same thing um, that we did with the gold texture, and we're gonna start with some uh, clouds. Clouds are a great way to kind of just create a background texture. It seems like you always start with clouds. I it's do always start with clouds. Face. We started today with clouds. We uh, did. The shirt, yeah, there's clouds today is. Yeah, Kathleen is wearing a cloud shirt. If you want to rewatch the Photoshop daily challenge, it's you true. Can see her shirt. And we're talking about Adobe Creative Cloud today, yes. sponsored by clouds, right? Um, apparently, I'm into it. well, <laughs> Adobe has multiple clouds. So we talk about clouds all the time at Adobe, and it gets a little confusing okay. sometimes. All right, so. Clouds, got it. So we are going to render out uh, clouds here and we're just gonna use uh, a dark color and a little bit lighter color. Now the thing that you need to keep in mind here is we're gonna be working, especially because we're working black and white, the colors don't really matter. Um, we're gonna be dropping an adjustment layer on top of everything that will key it out into black and white. And so I really wanna work with values here. Um, so a lot of times I'll pull colors that feel right so I'm not just working in grayscale and then I'll drop something on top of it to kind of level it out. Uh, this is also what they did with the Munsters. When they were shooting the Munsters, uh, mm -hmm. back in the day, it's an old show in black and white, uh, it was all in color and it was very vibrant, but then they changed it to black and white. Really? All right, so we're gonna render out clouds and you can see here this gives us, right, that nice kind of textured effect, like a background that would be on some kind of vintage film title. Um, and what I like to do with this is I'll always blur stuff, especially if we're wanting it to look old. We don't want it to be crisp and like it's on a modern screen. And so we're just gonna go in here um, and I'm gonna make a copy of that. And we're gonna go in here and we are going to blur and just add a slight ga ga Gaussian blur. Mm -hmm. I have been designing for 11 years and still pronounce that differently every time ga I say it. I thought it was Gaussian. Gaussian? Gaussian yeah. blur. Uh, so you'll see as we do this, uh, it's real subtle, but it's kind of giving us this nice feathered out effect, right? That's great. Do you know the Munsters theme tune? Oh my goodness. Caroline says it's the best theme tune ever. I um, think I used to know it, but I don't remember. I don't, I don't. Uh, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a gradient map. This is gonna be, th be the thing that just lays on top of everything that keeps it black and white, that allows us to work with these values um, and keeps everything kind of uh, locked in to where we want it. Right. Yes, you can add very realistic grain on camera raw. Kathleen says Ryan Gosling blur. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go in here and uh, we're gonna use a gradient map on top of everything and just change these to black and white. There we go. Uh, and we're gonna play around until this is at a point where we kind of want our blacks to be uh, maybe a little bit gray. So let's pull that up to a little bit more of a gray. There we go. Uh, and then this background, we really want it to be a little bit uh, darker, but we'll get there. So we're just starting out the videos and we're gonna build and build and build until uh, we get to a place that we are comfortable with. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab our little identifier that we've been using for the credit awards. Hi, Helmet. Welcome. Hello. So this is the identifier we've kind of been using for the credit awards, and we're gonna bring that over into Photoshop. Uh, just go ahead and paste that as a smart object, uh, and that feels just about right. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do, and I'm kind of building these layers as we go, kind of just thinking uh, of the elements. One of the elements that we picked out was that vignette around the edges, and so we're gonna add that vignette next, uh, just to give a little bit of zing. So zing. Yes, zing. Uh, what I'll do here is I'm gonna grab the lasso tool, and instead of doing vignettes using uh, a feature or kind of painting the edges, I like to do the lasso tool 
and I'll set the feather to be very high. So I'll set the feather at 200 pixels and I'll kind of just outline and make it a little bit wobbly. Oh. And this way your vignette doesn't look computer generated. Again, we're trying to make it look like it's on an old TV. And so it gets these weird kind of uh, oblong shapes to create a cool vignette. And then we're just gonna make a new layer, Command Shift N, boom, boom. And we're gonna grab our brush. Now we're gonna be brushing in black around the edges. Uh, again, a very soft brush for this vignette. Oh, that is definitely white. <laughs> Let's see, what did I do here? There we go. There she is. Uh, all right, we'll deal with that in a second. So we, I just flipped the gradient map so that our colors uh, worked right. So we're gonna go in here. We're just gonna brush out these edges a little bit, create a little bit of the, that vignette. And already you can see that it's starting to communicate and feel a little older, right? Mm -hmm. It feels like the, uh, the beginning of I Love Lucy a little bit, that texture background. Uh, and what is this missing? For me, it's missing that noise, that like old film noise. Yeah. So again, thinking in layers, we're just building and building and building. Uh, so we're gonna add a noise layer on top of all of this. So what I'll do is I will just make a new layer and I'm gonna fill this with a medium gray. Uh, that's the gray sound effect. And we're gonna go ahead and add noise. Filter noise, add noise. We're gonna add a good bit of noise. 141%. Wow. Uh, and I did that monochromatic so that again, we're trying to keep that color out, keep it just black and white. Uh, and we're adding in this noise and I'm gonna change the blending mode to overlay. Uh, what that'll do is it'll kind of pop out the whites, the blacks will stay consistent. And then we're gonna play around with the opacity. Um, again, working with those layers. I'm gonna take this opacity down just so much that we're getting a little bit of this kind of uh, roughness on these edges. And again, we talked about it, we want it to look old, we want it to kind of fit the TV, and these feel like little squares. So you can see the pixels here. Uh, we wanna get rid of that. We don't want it to look digital. So again, we're gonna go in, filter blur, and we're just gonna do a little Gaussian blur on this. Uh, that feels right. It feels like it was, uh, it was sharp at one point, but we're looking through it through an old screen. Texturize my angle of Photoshop to, yes, thank you. <laughs> You are the angel of Photoshop. I, I will be the angel of Photoshop. That is fine. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people joining in the last few minutes, so welcome. Welcome, Hello everyone. Hello. We are texturizing, uh, creating a old kind of vintage film title card for um, our brand experience, uh, our brand identity that we are building out for the credit awards that are an award show we're working on. Um, so. So we got our little texture, and for me, it's missing a little bit of dimension. And the thing that I love about old kind of uh, the raw noir is the way that they do the lighting, right? There's always yeah. this harsh lighting, and you'll see like the light across their eyes. And so we're gonna play around with that. Again, just adding in another layer, and this time we're gonna use an adjustment layer. Um, let's go in here and let's grab the lasso tool again. And again, whenever I'm working uh, with creating kind of lighting or darkness, I'm always using this lasso tool, very, very feathered. And we're gonna do that classic, like across the eye zone. So we're just gonna pull this here and grab kind of that harsh diagonal. And now that we have this selected, I'm gonna come over here and grab the curves. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna set on top of everything and curves help adjust the brightness or darkness um, of your image. And so we're just gonna pull this up a little bit. And you'll see now we're getting this really nice contrast, right? Yes, Tim, yeah. yes, the, the, raw, the raw noise does look better. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna be uh, kind of creating this light texture. So now you see that we're starting to get a little bit more of that uh, vintage film. We're starting to get a little bit more dimension mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna keep playing with this. And so the curves, as you pull this curve up, it will get brighter. As you curve it down, it will get darker. So we want it right there so there's some contrast. And I'm actually gonna pull down here. This is gonna make the shadows a little more intense. So we're gonna keep that contrast going, but still have um, that element of light. With the curves, do you really know what's happening? or? Like when you first started using it, did you just experiment with it? Or did yes. You know? So the the thing that I did once I got into any Adobe program is I literally went through 
here and went through every single one of these. Everything that's a layer, everything that's type, everything that's a filter and saw what they did. Yeah. Because it's just like a tasting. Like we said, when you're cooking, you need to taste the ingredients before you know what to do with them. Uh, yeah. And so yes, go in, don't be afraid that like, I'm doing it wrong. Literally just go in and try to break everything, mess it up, make it super weird because then you know what it is. Yeah. Um, I like to use the analogy that I have a lot of students that will say, you know, I'm proficient in Photoshop or I have five stars in InDesign. And to me, that's like a carpenter saying like, I am proficient in hammer. I have five stars in saw. Uh, like these are the tools that we use and the tools that you will use to express your creativity and create things. Um, and so take time, get proficient in these programs. Um, Adobe's created an amazing platform, amazing things for us to showcase our creativity. Um, so learn to use them. So you're not trying to build a birdhouse with like a piece of paper. <laughs> yes, we all know how that turns out. Yes. Um, let me just remind everyone we have a chat and win. It's been going on for two days, and it's with our friends at Moo. We are giving away this beautiful hardcover notebook, and it's, it comes in different colors. It has lay flat technology. I love saying that. I've it's true. It that has been, it's, it's exciting every time we talk about it. Look yes. how flat it is. Oh my goodness. So this can be yours, and I'll prompt you, but you can keep your eye out for the chat and win countdown when it gets to zero. I'll be like, okay, let's go. And all you have to do is write something in the chat. Maybe we can all say our favorite black and white movie in the chat. Oh yes, let's talk about black and white yeah. movies. So think about your favorite black and white movie and say it in the chat once that countdown goes to yes. zero. All right, so the next thing looking at this that's obviously standing out to me is, right, this logo that we have here. When we look at our inspiration, the inspiration, all these are white. They have that glow to them. They are white with that little drop shadow. And this is obviously wrong. It's black. Uh, so we are going to go in here and we are going to find our layer, um, which I'm going to actually name. Uh, and we are going to right click on this and we're going to add some blending options. Now, this is something uh, that once you do these, you can save them, you can figure out, uh, kind of write it down, make a note of how to do some of these layer styles because it's really easy to achieve some of those glow glowing effects using combinations of layer styles. So what we're gonna do first is we're obviously gonna do a color overlay and we're gonna set this uh, not at pure white, we're gonna set it kind of at a mid gray. So if you can see what's happening is because it's on a mid gray instead of white, we still are capturing some of these layers that are happening above it. So if we did a pure white, it would knock everything out, it would just be white. But doing that gray, we still get this little vignette that's coming over here, and it starts to pick up some of those subtle tones. So going back into our blending modes, we also are going to put a little bit of a glow on it, right? So we see this glow that's happening here. Uh, we wanna achieve that, so we're gonna go and find outer glow. It's right here, and we're gonna go ahead and check that on. And we're gonna set it to white because we want that white outer glow. And let's go crazy just to see what it does. So if we turn it all the way up, ah, uh, it, is, it is glowing. This is our logo fully glowed up, as they say. Um, this is glowing. So we're gonna change this uh, and bring it back down quite a bit. Uh, the noise is a little out of control, so we'll bring that down just for now. We'll bring it so there's just this kind of subtle glow happening uh, to our design. We're gonna go ahead and take the opacity down so it's just got a little bit of that glow. Oh, that's pretty cool. Right, we're starting to get somewhere. It's starting to feel a little older, a little more uh, glowy. Ari Aria says, I see what's happening here. Yes, it's happening. Yes. Uh, so something else that we want is we wanna add in some of this noise. Uh, we've been having noise on a lot of the other areas. We wanna keep incorporating that because uh, again, things that are old aren't usually sharp or crisp. Uh, so I feel all right with how this is looking. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay on that. And now we have, if we zoom in here, you'll see that we have kind of this nice glow. We've got kind of these edges going. And the next thing that we're gonna do, to me, it's blending into the background a little bit. Uh, and so we wanna create this dimension that we'd seen here. And so we're gonna go in and we are going to add this drop shadow. Uh, the same kind of thing that we're seeing here, a little bit seeing here, um, but 
I do this in my personal way in probably the most roundabout, least effective way possible. Uh, but it works, uh, <laughs> which is what's great about these programs. Uh, and we're going to go in here and we're just going to hold command and we are going to select the thumbnail. Uh, of this logo layer here. You'll see we'll get the marching ants ants around our shapes. And then I'm going to make a new layer under this. Uh, I'm using Command Shift N for that as the hotkey to make a new layer. Uh, and we're gonna set our background to black. I'm actually gonna send it to a darker gray. And then this is where the roundabout backwards Andrew Secret style comes in. <laughs> We're going to select that lasso tool. And what I'm going to do is if you hit Command and Delete, it's going to fill with the background color. And so we want this shadow to go at a 45 degree angle. And so instead of doing a blend in Photoshop or a, sorry, a blend in Illustrator, I'm literally just going to go one to the right, one down, and then hit Command, Delete, and it will fill it with that black. And so okay. it's very tedious, but if you get it and you go fast, you can create drop shadows very quickly and very easily. And you'll see I'm literally just doing down right, down right, down right, command delete, down right, command delete. Uh, doing His those. His hands were like uh, this. Yes. Oh, yeah. Here, let's get GoPro cam. Can we get the GoPro over? Yeah. Yes. I'll show you guys the hotkeys that we are using for this. Extreme close up. Okay. We need it flipped and then Oh we're yeah, good. here. And I'll come over here. All right, there we go. So we are literally going command delete and then command delete left down, command delete left down. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so that is how I will create these kind of drop shadows. Did everyone get that? Yeah, everyone's got it, right? <laughs> uh, that is not the you right way to do like it, this. but it's yeah, it's like playing a piano. Uh, very much like playing piano, and I just messed it up right there. So we're gonna go ahead and do this uh, real quick. So I've got a nice drop shadow. Sarah says, man, I got distracted for a second, and it looks amazing. It's all layer styles. It's very, very yeah. easy. Um, if you, yeah, missed it, got distracted for a second, watch back that replay. Uh, get up on it. It's very, very easy to learn and to kind of set. So now you'll see, as we get this kind of drop shadow going, uh, it's giving us that dimension, right? We really like that it has that dimension. It's starting to match this look again that we were kind of working with. Uh, and. The thing that I'm seeing all around is that it's very crisp still. And so we want to again go in and we are just going to grab these effects. We're going to right click, copy layer style, and we're going to paste it onto this shadow. Uh, we're going to need to go in and change the color so it's not glowing white, but we want those same values. So I'll go in here, I'm going to change it to that dark black. And same with the outer glow, we are going to set to that darker black. There we go. I am going to make this a little more gray. <clears throat> there we go. Of course, we're getting some alternatives in the chat. Oh, yes. Please, Hit alternatives. Alt, alt, command, T, and then command, alt, shift, T. Is that doing transform again? Chat? Alt, command, T. Uh, no, command. Just... All right, we're going somewhere. It's it's happening, guys. The thing is happening. Uh, we have about 30 seconds seconds till chat and win. Uh, so we're going to hop back in right after chat and win and really give this uh, a long shadow, mm -hmm. add some more texture, give it that real grit and depth. Uh, but we have about 20 seconds of chat and win. Yeah. Hit alt, S one, one hitting one. command T, do the movement once, then do, and it's like commanding you know each other. Oh my goodness, magic. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Suriel. Surreal. I want to say surreal. Yeah, let us know for pronouncing your name right. Surreal. Yes, he actually last night uh, hit me up on Instagram. He's been watching oh, the really? streams and he did an animation for our brand identity. And That's so it's awesome. in the pitch that we're going to be showing at the end of the stream. Uh, I put it at the end. It's mocked up on a phone. It's really, really amazing. Uh, so we'll check that out later. Okay, thanks for doing that. Okay, it's time to start chatting Chat to win this notebook. Win. Time tell, to tell us your favorite black and white film. Uh, mine is probably Maltese Falcon. Like, I'm okay. a fan of like just old school, old school. Uh, any I'll guys? tell you mine afterwards. Yes. Oh, I like that. Time for you guys to start. Yes, Let's any, go. any. Great. Yes, I love Logan all the, the Nora cut. <laughs> These are good answers, guys. Honeymooners, Sabrina, Dancing in the Rain. Oh, well, my Sin tell, yeah, City. 
Casablanca. Oh, that's my favorite answer. The beginning part of The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes. The artist. That's a great one. The artist is a great one. I cried a lot in that movie. I was going to say Aroma because I just watched it two days ago and it was really awesome. Psycho. Oh yeah, old school Mickey Mouse. Yeah, some uh, Steamboat Willie. I don't know how it goes. I, I can't believe I don't know how it goes. The artist. Yes, Sin Casablanca. City is getting a lot of love. Jackie! Jackie, Jackie Birch. Birch! Congrats, you get this notebook. You did it, guys. Well, you did it, that Jackie. Sorry, you did it, Jackie. <laughs> and for everyone else, you actually get a 15% discount on Moo.com. Oh my goodness. So even if you didn't win this notebook, um, we do have a code for Moo. And once all this chatting is done, um, Tim can put it in the chat for you guys to click on. Yep, and if you didn't win, you're all winners because we have our free gold and silver foil textures for you guys. Yeah, that uh, is up on my very Instagram, valuable. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's winners, for, winners for everyone. So uh, let's just repeat that. Um, yep. Andrew put a link in his bio on Instagram where he has some assets that you can get for free, including this silver and gold texture and his pitch deck, right? Yep, yep, the pitch deck's in there. Um, links to our Black Roses podcast, The Brand Bar, talking about branding. Links to the Black Roses website if you'd like to check out some of the other partners. Um, but yeah, we these are up there. Um, and yesterday we talked about this a little bit, that gold foil is just, or silver foil is just gold and black and white. Um, so we did that. Yes, you get a free texture, you get a free texture. <laughs> I am like design Oprah. Free textures. Uh, all right, cool. So back to this. We are on our way somewhere. We're not quite there yet. So let's start, uh, let's keep adding. Uh, to me, the contrast isn't quite enough. And so I'm gonna actually add another curves layer to this um, and make just the outside a little bit more um, dark. So again, super feathered lasso brush. We're just going around here, making a very rough selection. And I'm gonna come back up here to the top and we're gonna right click and then select inverse. So instead of having the inside selected, we want the outside and we're gonna add another curves layer. Uh, and I like doing curves instead of brightness and contrast because you can really pull a specific points of the highlights, of the lowlights, really mess around with it. Um, and I like this interface a lot when working in black and white. So we want these edges to be a little more contrasty. There we go. That's feeling a little bit better for me. And then we're going to go in and adjust this one that we have coming across the middle to be a little bit brighter. Um, so you can just double click here on this little circle with a slash. Uh, and we're just going to grab this and pull it up so it's a little bit brighter. Get that glowed up. Yes. Jose says, this reminds me of the Three Stooges credits. Yes, we are, we are going for that era. So we are definitely moving in the right direction, which I'm super excited about. Uh, all right, so next, um, I actually want to add some banding lines. Um, oh, Sarah, we are working on texturing our logo um, from yesterday, plugging it back into the brand identity system. So we're gonna add some banding lines. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is come back into Illustrator. And the only reason I do this is uh, it's personal preference. It's easier for me to kind of just use the command D in here and make uh, some banding lines. Yes, the edges are more edgy. <laughs> uh, we're just going to make some little banding lines here, uh, make them black. And again, we're going to use that option drag uh, to just add a little bit uh, and give us another copy and then command D all the way down to make this nice vibrating. Uh, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. It's really it's hard to look at. It's doing a little moiré. It's, it's doing a lot. Uh, <laughs> my goodness. Uh, and we're just going to paste that here uh, on top of our design. All right, so that's there. That obviously is ruining it right now. But again, if we're thinking about uh, using these kind of elements, right? That we're picking out these elements. This is like putting in a uh, full clove of garlic when we may just need a sprinkling. So what we're gonna yes. do is this is way too much right now. I think we're gonna this take is like a whole head of garlic. It is. Yeah. This is. We're gonna take this opacity down. We're gonna take it down to like twenty. Uh, and then again, it's super, super crisp. And so we're gonna do that same thing. Blur, Gaussian blur, different pronunciation again. And I'm actually gonna set this one at like five. There we go. And so now you can see that we're getting these little banding lines, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason that it's all starting to work together 
is because of these layers. You'll see that the layers, uh, the noise is interacting with the lines. Yeah. The lines are interacting with the text. The text is interacting with the shadow. It's all kind of building on each other to keep this, uh, to keep this kind of style going. Ian asked, um, I'd love to know what your own brand persona is for Black Roses. Yes, so you can actually, uh, if you go to blackroses.com, uh, we actually have our manifesto up there that talks a little bit about who we are, what we do, kind of our approach to brand experience, um, and who we are kind of as a brand experience agency. So yeah, blackroses.com um, has all that on there, and our brand identity for Black Roses, uh, we're a little bit secretive, uh, we're a little bit edgy. Um, if you look, our logo is just the stem and the thorn because we wanna be a little bit unexpected. Uh, and sometimes when you have something beautiful, uh, and it's got a little zing with it, got a little. Oh yeah, there. or else it's not exciting. Yeah, you don't want someone that's just like I'm nice. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, the petals are overrated. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you need a little bit of edge. Reverb, Mike. I have been watching everything you're saying, and I love it. Yes. But I haven't been able to call you out. So hey, Reverb, Mike. <laughs> uh, all right. So again, we've said this a few times. This is too crisp. Uh, so even though we have this kind of fuzzy edge, it still feels a little bit too clean. And don't be afraid of pushing things too far. So because these are uh, smart objects here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna actually group these. And right here, this is just our logo now. So you'll see because we're working with layers, we can very easily turn that layer off turn it back on, and all that stuff that's stacked on top of it is interacting with it using our layer styles, using our opacities, everything's interacting with each other. So we're gonna make a copy of this uh, just so that I have one down here. I'm gonna name this uh, our reserve logo. There we go. And then I'm gonna make this into a smart object. Got it. Uh, and then again, we're just gonna add that blur to this so that it fills in a little bit more. And what it's doing is it's gonna take all those things that we've added to it uh, and blur it out just a little bit. Five is way too much, but setting it at two gives us a little bit of that softer edge. It's starting to glow up a little bit um, and going more in the direction that I think we want. Thankful for the glow up. Glow up. Uh, and the last thing, we're gonna do two more things to this before we call it did. Uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, use our command click, and we're gonna wanna select both the shadow that we have on it and the letters. What? Yes, bold decision. Yes, we, we love making bold decisions. Uh, I personally do, and we also do at Black Roses. We like to kind of flip some tables, as I like to call it. Mm. So we've got our reserve logo. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab I've got some weird things selected, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and grab both our letters and our shadow. Uh, and again, I'm gonna do that same technique, which is uh, wrong and I still need to learn the new one uh, that you guys are telling me about, but we're gonna go the opposite direction. And what this is doing is we're thinking, if the light is coming, sorry, from this direction down that way. It's the opposite. Oh my goodness, down that. <laughs> That way, got yeah. it, oh my goodness, got it, there we go. Coming down that way, uh, we want to create a long shadow that's coming out that way as well. And so we're going to do that same thing and we're filling it in except this time we're going down and to the left. Uh, and I actually won't do as much on this one because we're gonna use another blur. Ooh, so, so we're many filling blurs. This. I know, well we want everything to be blurry, we want it to look like that old TV. Uh, and so now we're starting to get a little bit more of that dimension, but it's too harsh, so we're gonna take the opacity down here. It's like a there whole chili pepper. Yep, and now you're now seeing, right, that we're starting to get a little bit of that dimension to it. Uh, and what I like to do here is do that super long shadow. So we're gonna grab this shadow layer that we're doing here and just go to filter. And we're gonna do a blur, and we're gonna do a motion blur this time. I want it to pull out at that 45 degree angle, so we're gonna motion blur. There we go. Whoa. And you'll see if we just set it a little bit, you'll see that it starts to glow and starts to have a little bit more of that dimension. Um, now, it's also pushing the shadow to this upper side, uh, but it doesn't become as noticeable because of the extra shadow that's under here. So now we've got, right, this title card. It's looking pretty good to me. Um, I'm like pretty into it. Uh, <laughs> and the last thing that we're gonna do is we are going to glow it up 
even more. Uh, and then we can use this as maybe an intro to the uh, credit awards. Uh, maybe it's something that we use as a special like lifetime achievement. Mm -hmm. Maybe we give it to Charlie Chaplin's stunt doubles younger son or something is like a legacy award. <laughs> and yes, Kevin, it is so simple. Uh, so again, it's just been years of breaking things through uh, and really just experimenting to try to come up with how we can do this. So the yeah. last thing we're gonna do is we are gonna glow it up. I was going to say the images that are your inspiration, the text does look a lot brighter. It does. It doesn't have a lot of noise on the text. Yes, it does. And so that's what we're going to do right now is we're noticing that if we look in here, especially in the details here and in here as well, there's a little bit of that, but not much. Um, and it looks like they're emanating a little bit of a glow, right? Yeah. And so we want to try to do that. And so what we're going to do here um, is we're literally just going to paint in a glow. I'm gonna make a new layer and I wanna make it under the noise and under these banding lines. Again, we're thinking the noise is on top, then the banding lines, then we wanna add a little bit more of this glow. So I'm gonna add a new layer and we're gonna change the blend mode of this to dissolve. And what dissolve does is as we paint in, oh, this is gonna murder my computer for a second. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring this brush way down. Uh, you'll see that dissolve gives this nice grain. And that's gonna interact very nicely with what we have been working with uh, on the other sides. But so if it was normal, it would just be a clean line. Exactly, so uh, if we look here and set this to normal, it's painting in a, a clean line, but you can see that because of that noise, yeah. the way it's interacting, it's still picking up a little bit of that noise. Um, and we actually want that, so this might work better. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that on normal because it looks so great. And yeah, we're gonna come in here. I was here. not expecting that to look so good. Yeah, we're gonna come in here and kind of just dab in some of these uh, parts that we want to glow. And it's nice because you can see as we play with this opacity and bring it up, we can adjust what the glow is on this. Mm -hmm. um, this is really fun. We may get into today, uh, we may not, but in Photoshop, you can actually animate these. Uh, and if you're an animator out there, this is really great to have a layer like this that you can literally take the opacity and you can play with it so that it animates in and it creates kind of this glowing effect by just changing the opacity. So we're gonna leave this uh, at 75. Uh, and again, we're just coming in here and getting rid of some of these banding lines, tossing in little areas that we think should glow a little bit more. Uh, and this isn't about being perfect. This is really about just kind of creating a little more texture, a little more depth. Um, see, that's too much. Uh, and we learned that. So we're gonna come over here and maybe we'll just drop it on the bottom part of the R, give little elements that are kind of glowing uh, to really create that a little too much over here, and let's do the side of that C. There we go, so we've got a little bit, uh, some weird things happening over here. We're gonna take this opacity down just a little bit. There we go. We'll see that we've got that glow. Um, we feel like this is kind of looking older. Uh, it's got the vibe that we really want and achieving that all with layer styles and stacking layers. Um, and the great thing, again, if you're an animator or you're looking to try to mess around in Photoshop, try to break things, I'm not gonna show you how, but I'll show you where. Um, and then it's up to you to explore. You're gonna go to Window and click on Timeline. Here you can do a frame animation, you can do a video animation, uh, and you can play around with all kinds of things, uh, like what would happen if we took all of these layers that we've created, right? That's just a logo. Oh, I grabbed the vignette in there, we wanna take that out. There we go. Uh, if we grab all these layers that are just a logo, we can turn it on and off, right? And all those effects are going away, coming together, and because it's built in layers and everything's on its uh, separate layer, we can drag this around. We can animate this so that, uh, imagine this is animating as our opening title to Ooh. the conference, right? Or to the yeah. award show. That it scrolls in and then locks down. So this is something that, uh, these are just different layer styles. Uh, again, there's a million ways to create this kind of look. Um, this is the kind that I like to go with and I think that it works well for kind of that old vintage film that we're looking for. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and save this out. I'm matching it with my 
polka dots. That's true. Loving it. Yes. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and save this out and then we're gonna hop over into Illustrator and keep building out this brand system a little bit. Uh, and we're gonna show you how to achieve some of these textures um, and kind of the grittiness in Illustrator as well. Cause it's great in Photoshop, but we definitely wanna explore it in Illustrator as well if we need a vector application. Awesome. So I'm just gonna save this. Um, hey, Muhammad. Hi, Massimiliano. Hi, Afroja, David. Thanks everyone for joining. If you are just joining, don't forget to submit your portfolio. We have another about 40 minutes uh, left for you to submit your portfolio and we can review it. And this will be happening all day, so you can submit it later and it will be reviewed by the next hosts and designers coming up. Yep. Uh, I'm really excited to see your guys' portfolios. So. It's going to be great. So we're going to start. Uh, one of the things that we saw in our creative brief is they wanted to kind of explore a little bit of texture. And so we are, uh, again, we are all about texture today. Uh, in about 15, 20 minutes or so, we're going to jump ahead. Today's going to be a little bit of a baking show. Uh, I did a ton of work last night building out the kind of full <coughs> brand identity. So I wanted to show you guys some practical hands-on tips that you can take home uh, instead of just working on uh, adding mock-ups and stuff. Uh, we did that. I did that all last night. So we're going to do the, here's what we're presenting. And then I'm going to open the oven and pull out. And I'm actually going to pitch you guys, the chat uh, and the viewers, if you're watching this later, as the client to give you a little bit of idea about how we present a brand system, about how we talk to the client, about how this brand system works, uh, and really show, uh, I, I think, a little bit of the difference of how Black Roses approaches projects and solutions instead of delivering assets. Um, cool, so let's hop into Illustrator and show some kind of texturing techniques. Um, let's do, this one is fairly easy, so we'll start here. Um, we're gonna grab a texture. What a great way to start a texturing technique. Oh. Uh, and where will we grab oh, that from? From Adobe Stock. Adobe Stock today, sponsored by Clouds and <laughs> Adobe Stock. Uh, we're going to hop over to Adobe Stock. And like we have looked in Photoshop, we aren't necessarily looking for a certain type of texture. Um, I like to think of everything in black and white uh, and look at values. So as we go through here, I want something that uh, is maybe a little bit grungy but we don't want quite grungy. We want it to look a little more almost paper uh, ink rolled. So let's look here. Grainy abstract texture. Yeah, that's looking a little too digital. Yeah, a little too digital, a little too kind of splotchy for me. Um, let's use this one. Uh, so this definitely feels grungy and very intense, but I'm gonna show you guys how one one texture can really turn into a bunch of different textures by augmenting it, by tossing uh, weird stuff in there. Hi, Carmen and Jamie. Hello. Tina. Hello, Chanel, friends. Kevin. Yes, Reaver Mike. After Effects is incredible. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab this off of uh, Adobe Stock. Oh, I must be signed in to, to access, access this resource. Oh, I am. <gasps> you are signed in. I might be signed in. All right, let's try this one more time. Uh, and if not, guys, <laughs> we're making our own textures. Uh, <laughs> All right, so let's grab, let's see, where's the one? Oh, well, this like... one. This feels right. All right, let's see if we can license this. Hooray, our download is beginning shortly. And by shortly, it means right now. <laughs> so, Miriam, if you want to submit your portfolio, check the portfolio review tab above the chat, and it will have a link to a sheet where you can fill in your information. Yep. Oh, oh here's there's the one. The one. There's the one. There's the one. Grunge. All right, so this is opening right now in Illustrator. It looks like it is an EPS, uh, which is totally fine. Uh, we're actually going to save this out as a PNG just to show you guys if you were taking a picture of concrete with your phone, if you were uh, liked a wall that you saw. Uh, you can really create <laughs> textures with anything. So we're going to go ahead and open this in Illustrator. All right, so it's uh, already looks like, yep, it's got a lot of anchor points here. Um, actually, you know what? Let's grab, let's grab a pavement. So let's use an image so I can show you guys if you are out and about and you grab a photo, I want you to be able to create your own textures uh, and texturize in your own way. Chanel asked if there are textures you tend to use more than others. Um, as far as 
like a stock texture or something that like I have images ready, no. Um, I'll build a lot of my own textures. Uh, I tend to use things that are gritty. Uh, I like things that look inky uh, and that kind of stuff. And yes, taking photographs of textures is much easier. So I actually really like this one here. It's a JPEG, so we can use that. Um, I like that it has that nice grittiness, but to me, I'll see the values, that we can invert this, we can boost the contrast, we can change it to white. We can really play around with a lot of layers and depth of texture here. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this one. Roger said, I should probably say hello. Well, I should hello. probably respond hello, to- Hello, hello. Hi. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and open this in uh, Photoshop. There Reverbs Mike says, I like to visit the parking lot at work and make my own textures. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, wow, this is great. I am super into this. I love it so much. Uh, and you know what we're actually gonna do? I like this so much. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it onto the background of what we were working with here. So I like the depth of texture. And again, because we worked with layers, I can just drop this into the background. Oh my goodness. <gasps> and it got real crazy. That looks good. Capacity. Yep, so it's got a little bit more of that texture. So again, because you're working with layers, you can add things, take things away. So we're gonna grab this uh, and let's do this all in Illustrator for now. Goodbye. We're gonna drag our texture in here and we're gonna be using something called an opacity mask in Illustrator. Uh, opacity masks are really fun, really great, uh, super easy to use. We're just going to take this image and we're gonna drop it over whatever we want to mask and select both of them. So you'll see here that they're both selected. If you wanna see what uh, values are there, you can hit Command Y. It will bring up just the outlines. And then we're gonna go over to Transparency, this little tab here. Uh, and what we're gonna do is hit Make Mask. And now you'll see what it's doing is it's taking all of the blacks, all of the shadows, mm -hmm. and knocking them out. It's taking all the highlights and keeping them, bringing them to the front. Okay. And so since this doesn't have a lot of uh, highlights, it's going to knock out a lot of our image, which is fine. Oh, let's go ahead and select the whole thing. There we go. So now we see it's turned to white because there is a lot that has been knocked out. Uh, and what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and invert the mask. <laughs> And what that does, it's it's doing the opposite. It's keeping the darks, uh, taking out the lights. Yeah. And so what's nice about opacity mask is it's already got this nice texture. It's giving us this nice texture. And if we need to drop something behind it, um, let's say that we need to drop a color or something, or it's going on a photo, opacity masks are going to keep that opacity. So now you can see that it's taken that texture and basically taken it and pushed it onto what we were using um, as our logo. Kerwin says, no one cared who I was until I put on the mask. Yes, yes, this is our this is our phantom of the opera moment. <laughs> uh, and so what I'll do uh, a lot of times with texture is, I think this is great, but again, it still feels too clean for me. I love to do things that are rough, that are rugged, that have kind of that hard edge that feel a little more hand done. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a copy of this. And we're gonna start playing around with some effects in Illustrator. Um, again, Illustrator works in vector, but we're gonna be using some raster effects to really mess it up and then pull it back into vector using live trace. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, completely off the rails. <laughs> so we're just gonna select this and go to effect and we're gonna add in a blur. So these are Photoshop effects down here, which means that they are raster, um, which means that it won't be eternally scalable, but that's fine, we'll get back to that. We're gonna turn on our preview and we're gonna play around with how this blur looks. So again, we're looking to kind of get rid of some of the detail on some of these letters. And if you've ever seen a design that has uh, kind of a nice rounded edge on everything, a lot of times designers will do this. They'll make it super clean, they'll blur it, and then what we're gonna do is we are going to select it and we are going to rasterize it. Hmm. Rasterize. So now that it's rasterized, what that does is it basically makes it just an image. Uh, so now we have the blur on it. We have a little bit of that texture on it that we've pulled from Photoshop. And then we're gonna come in here to image trace. Uh, image trace is something that automatically will go in. It will kind of uh, guess at what you want it to be. It's basically punching out uh, and making it vector again. Uh, and what 
I like to think of it as doing is it's keeping all the blacks and punching out all the whites. And so doing something like this that is blurry, that has all this texture, almost I feel like will confuse it into something cool. Like it makes it just messed up enough to feel like it's been custom done. So I'll go ahead and go in here. Um, and I have a preset that's just halftone. I'll show you guys the setting for that in a second. And we're gonna go ahead and run that. Ah. All right, so we'll look at the settings here uh, if you guys wanna do it. Uh, the settings that I use, I've got my threshold here at 110. My paths are at 98, so it's picking up almost all the paths. My corners at zero, I want them to be super, super crisp. And then our noise at two, we want it to pick up as many little things as we can. So what's nice, yes, my computer is going to absolutely uh, explode doing this technique. Uh, which is fine. It's pulling a lot of anchor points in here. Uh, we're gonna keep it raster until we need to. But what it's doing is it's pulling in all these and we can really play around with taking this threshold down. And if you take the threshold down, it's gonna think about it for a hot second and then it's going to basically make it lighter. So the lower the lower the threshold, the lighter it will be, right? Now we're missing a whole bunch. Or if we take it all the way up, it's gonna make it super dark. So here, it's nice because we got this kind of hard edge, but I still want a little more of that ink roll kind of texture on it and the little pieces that we're missing in here. There we oh, go. Oh, that's cool. Right, and so that's feeling just about right. Let's take it down a little bit more and see where it goes. Boop, boop. All right, a little too much, so that's fine. So you guys can play around with it. Yes, this is a great effect to do. Um, the hoods also have a technique that they'll use with this uh, on the edges here that uh, create that kind of rough in, but I like to bring in a texture and mask it out uh, and then play around with auto trace. Uh, if you guys are looking to learn more about texture, um, I've learned another technique like this that's absolutely incredible that's taught by Ben Stafford. Um, look him up, follow him on Instagram, uh, Ben, B-E-N-S-T-A-F-F-O-R-D. He's absolutely incredible. He teaches a class about texturing and it's awesome. So I've awesome. learned uh, some techniques from him on this. And for those of you that didn't catch yesterday and the day before, there's a replays tab right above where you're watching on Behance Live. So you can look at this video again because you wanna see all the steps that Andrew just did or yesterday's or the day before. And we have a few people that just joined. Hi, hello, friends. Atisham, welcome. Hello, hello. Hi, Goran. Goran is loving everything that we're doing. Yes. So seeing here, that blur just makes these have these rounded edges. Um, and I'm sorry, it's, it, it like kind of ruins the text, but I think it like brings it to a new level. Uh, I like to kind of mess things up a little bit to see what we can get uh, as we experiment with these textures. Yes, go follow Ben oh, Stafford. Oh, Ben is here. Hello, Ben. Hey. Hello, yes guys, go follow Ben Stafford. Um, he uses a similar technique that I'm not gonna show you on stream because it's his and he teaches a class on it, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> but it does, uh, he works a lot with colors, works a lot with um, gradients and it's incredible. So yeah. let's do one more texture and then I'm gonna show you guys the full brand identity system that we've built out. So, bye Jimmy, bye. Jimmy has to go to a meeting. All right, so let's do one more texture um, and let's see, what do we wanna do here? I know, <laughs> um, let's make our own texture guys. So we've been using textures that are pre-made, but you know what? We are strong and independent. And I am going to show you guys the same I way. I believe in you. Yes, I, I believe in me as well. Uh, the same way that we have been building out a lot of the effects we've been using by just using clouds. So when you're thinking textures, we're literally just thinking about positive and negative values. Black and white, the black's gonna punch out, the white's gonna stay. And so let's do black and white and we are just going to render out some clouds. There we go, so we've got some nice clouds. Number one, always start with a cloud. Wow, texture. Uh, and what we can do here is we can either add effects in Photoshop or we can kind of play around with different ways uh, to make this. Uh, a little more interactive, but I'm gonna show you guys what happens if we literally just render out our own clouds and then do that same technique that we just did. We're gonna toss the clouds on top. We're gonna make a mask. And then I'm just gonna come in here and we are going to give it a little bit of a blur. And then again, we're gonna go in and just auto trace it. 
And once you have these settings, you can uh, save them for the future. Uh, and this is just gonna show you how easy it is to use your own textures. So it got a little bit weird, a little bit too much, but we're gonna bring this up again, bringing the threshold higher, uh, makes it a little bit uh, more intense. And so I love just these little, little details that it's kind of guessing on that creates these really dynamic letters. This way you're not having to, uh, you're not having to go in and change little anchor points or make it softer. Um, using that blur and auto trace is absolutely incredible to create this kind of texture. Cool. Yeah, so now ben we've got Ben Stafford says, I currently texture. am working full time for Focus Lab now and hope to have my vector texture class available soon through Sidecar. Yes, yeah, definitely take his vector texture class. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so good. He goes into 40 different techniques uh, that we haven't talked about today. He's super influenced my work and the way that I work. Um, but yeah, he's absolutely amazing. Go follow him. Hey, Dahlia. Hey, Arlie from Mexico. I saw you earlier chiming in and Everton. Good to see all of you. Great to see new people joining throughout the stream. Hello, friends. And portfolio submission deadline, 28 minutes. 28 minutes, guys. Um, cool. So we uh, have looked at some texture techniques. Again, we've looked at kind of this rough edge using opacity masks. We've looked at this kind of blurred out version uh, working with clouds. We've gone into Photoshop and worked a lot with texture in Photoshop to create things like this. Um, and something else that we did in Photoshop uh, is I brought in this credit awards and we're gonna start transitioning out of teaching you guys things. Uh, and I wanna go back to what we've been working on the last two days. The last two days we've been talking a lot about the why behind design. And I wanted to take a little bit of time to, today to show you guys how and show some techniques and stuff. But we're gonna jump back and we're gonna go through the full brand build out that uh, I've been working on, that we worked on together, uh, that I've kind of expanded. This is the baking show part of the show mm -hmm. where I say, oh yeah, we're gonna work on some mock-ups and then it's I open the, the great, oven and I go the great Adobe live bake-off yes it's a good bake um <laughs> yes oh my goodness I'm so happy that that just happened uh so something that I something that I like to do when presenting to clients is we have um we have this logo here and it, we worked yesterday and created a bunch of different versions of this logo right we had a silver version we played around with it uh, having cutouts uh having uh, you know, different elements that are kind of in those as a brand element, something that's a full cutout of photos. And I really liked this idea. And so what I did is I wanted to create a GIF. So what we did is we went to Window, Timeline, and in Photoshop, it's really, really easy. Uh, let me move this so I'm yeah. not over it. There we go. It's really, really easy to uh, create a timeline with an animated GIF. So basically what you do is you're gonna click on new here and each one that you click, you can designate what it looks like. And so we're just changing and cycling through each of these. And this is something that I'll use a lot um, when presenting to clients to show the variations of what a logo could be, to go through secondary marks. Um, and it's just an easy way to add a quick little animation without having to get into After Effects, without having to get too crazy, as you're just stacking layers on top of each other. What if your shapes are different? If your shapes are different, probably not a good solution. Yeah. Uh, this is something that I'll usually only use if it's a punch out, if it's a similar shape, if I'm gonna try to scroll through things very quickly, okay. um, I'll use these frame animations. Cool. Hey Armando, Hello. hey Sean. All right, um, so let's transition. We got 25 minutes. So we're gonna walk through this full uh, brand identity system. Uh, just to recap, I'm gonna go over the creative brief, then I'm gonna look at the Illustrator file that we have been working on together. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna treat you guys as the client. Um, I'm going to pitch you and show you the the way to that we like to present a brand identity system <coughs> and some of the things that uh, build out into something broader than anything we've worked on individually here. So let's just walk real quick through this creative brief. So we are working on something for the credit awards. Uh, and again, we read this at the beginning of the stream. It's a night of recognition for all the people that work behind the scenes. Uh, and usually we'll go back through this with a client just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. The goals, the biggest one to, was to create a scalable system, which we'll see, I think that we've done by, by picking out those brand elements and then kind of remixing and remixing them into something new. 
Uh, the voice, classic, organic, energetic, relaxed, funny. We wanted to encompass this character of Lenny, Lenny. who's above us. Hey, Lenny, um, who is actually a real person. Uh, she's one of my oh, friends really? and she's awesome. Yes, oh. she is awesome. I, I try to base uh, client pitches off of my actual friends because it helps me kind of develop the character to say, yeah. Lenny would say this, she wouldn't say that. <laughs> um, but most of the clients don't know that. <laughs> Again, our inspiration, we looked at a lot today, film titles, uh, a lot of this kind of uh, printed texture, and then a lot of geometry. This is something that we really, really worked off uh, in this brand identity system, is playing with that geometry. Oh, David says, I used to work in making movie trailers and never got my name in anything. So this is for you. This is for you, David. David, you are the winner of our first <laughs> ever credit award. Uh, come on up to the stage. David Marks. Yes. All right, so uh, we're gonna hop over and kind of start walking through the full build out. Uh, let's look at our Illustrator document real quick. So this is what we've been working on the last few days. Um, and I'm sure that at some point you guys may have tuned in and you're like, oh man, this is kind of slow going or, you know, there's a lot of pieces that are kind of just out there. Like how does it all come together? That's the glory of building a brand identity system mm -hmm. that really uh, is elements that work together to create something new. So we played around yesterday and came up with this kind of mark. We liked the idea of the vertical alignment being a big thing, the large shapes, the credit blocks being used as punch outs, and started to play around even with this, the kind of repeating pattern. And instead of presenting a logo to the client, I like to present, here's the system and here's how it works. And then kind of facilitate them to reinvent it, to reimagine it. And if they're working with other designers, uh, to kind of uh, figure it out. So let's go right into this, this uh, pitch. And I am going to treat you guys like our client. So you guys in chat will be the credit awards. Hello, credit awards chat. <laughs> So do you want the chat to ask you questions afterwards? Yeah, yeah, if Just you guys like have questions. Client. Yeah, if you guys have questions as we go, go ahead and ask those questions um, and we'll get to them at the end. And I'll hopefully this will be good for you guys to see um, the difference that I think Black Roses has to presenting a brand identity system as opposed to logos um, or building out like a full deck uh, with, uh, you know, all these comps and stuff. Uh, goodbye, software design. Goodbye, Bye, JR. JR. <laughs> all right, so let's hop in. Hello, hello chat, uh, hello credit awards. So today we're gonna be presenting to you the brand identity system for the credit awards. We wanted to create something that was scalable and versatile that would work for you, that you guys could scale on your own and really not only celebrate the 18th year, but become a system that will continue on for years to come. So just to recap, um, the credit awards are a night of recognition for those who are only seen as names on a screen. You won't find the A-list stars or gold dra draped tables. They're the X, Y, and Z of Hollywood and the, they're behind the scenes behind all the scenes. Uh, so just as a side note, we build all these uh, pitch decks custom to the client in their brand identity system so that they can start to see how it works and they can start to experience their own voice of their own organization instead of it looking like uh, Black Roses. Uh, yes, and again, Gorgon, we are integrating different elements of the logo into different pieces. That's the glory of building out a brand system is you can kind of break things out and it becomes a visual language. So the first thing that we always do is we start working on inspiration. Uh, we look at inspiration and as we talked with the client, we loved old film, we loved a lot of this geometry, we got super into kind of cutouts, playing with photos, showing through, um, and kind of going through all this inspiration. So we'll go through this with the client and you'll see here just as a little side note, oh, out of the way, there we go, down there, uh, you'll see that we're starting to tease that voice. Uh, we've played a lot around with the scroll of uh, type and the scroll of the credits in this brand identity system. And so I like to put little nods to that system to help inform the viewer about what they're seeing and start telling the client how their organization speaks. Uh, so from inspiration, we're moving on to voice. And again, it's like we're scrolling through credits. So the voice here is that we are classic, not dated, organic, not grungy, energetic, but not chaotic, relaxed, not casual, and we are sassy, but not flippant. Uh, I believe in the original pitch, sassy was something like uh, that it was funny, but as we've started to build out this voice, we really think that it's sassy. <laughs> um, I really think that as we worked on it, it's just become more and more sassy. I like how you cut off the next title 
just like that whole system of scrolling. Yep. Yeah. I really so, noticed that, and it made me wonder, like, why is he doing that? And then I'll find out. Exactly. Yeah. So it, especially in building out pitch decks, I like to incorporate the brand identity and those little things we've talked about the last day, the last few days of giving that index that now instead of feeling like a slide, it feels like it's scrolling. It yeah. feels like there's something more. It feels like we're cutting something off and it feels a little bit more like it's on a scrolling screen. Mm -hmm. And so those small decisions of just placement and using that as an index help inform and start to bring, uh, bring the voice to life. So moving into type systems, we really wanted to create a type system uh, that felt bold, that encompassed your voice. And again, we wanted it to be strong, but then have a little bit of sass to it. And so we have a little bit of this end uh, that we're using this bold, uh, the bold headline of Dunbar Tall, but then a little bit of sassy matching it with that Matrix 2. Uh, and Matrix 2, we like to say, is kind of the like backhanded, like, but you'll never guess what happens next. Uh, and Dunbar is an absolutely amazing typeface. Um, it was made by CJ Dunn. Yeah. CJ Dunn, uh, if he's in the chat, hello CJ. We've been just absolutely dying over this typeface <laughs> the last couple days. It's incredible, we love it. It's a variable typeface, so if you guys wanna grab it from Adobe Fonts, um, definitely go do that, go check it out, um, it's gorgeous. So the next thing that we're gonna present are the identifiers. So a lot of times when building a brand system, I don't like to use the verbiage of a logo or a secondary mark. I like to use the verbiage of an identifier. I think identifiers are elements that we use within the brand to remind people of who that brand is. We're creating mental checkpoints for people in their brain. So we're gonna look at our identifiers and this is Ooh, the, the application. Yeah, the application of what we talked about, that GIF. Um, of kind of cycling through the different elements. And this is usually the big reveal for the client is, hey, we're gonna look at the identifiers and I will show here is the one that you're gonna say, oh, I get it. Using, this, using these pieces, this can be our logo. And then I like to take a twist on it and say, yes, this could be your logo, but more than a logo, this builds into a full system of identifiers. Um, it's not just a logo that you'll slap on everything. It's a series of pieces that have been assembled and can be broken apart, can be reassembled by you to scale this into a full identity system so that you can use it in a whole bunch of different ways. And so uh, this is something that you can see, we can uh, achieve that scrolling effect, we can play with the arrangement, uh, and we really loved exploring the idea of pulling the credit awards um, and really playing with that extreme horizontal application. Um, and you'll see we'll be getting into applications uh, next. So looking at this brand identity system, these identifiers, we've played around with some of the pieces, but we really wanted to show you what it's like to break it apart and see how it builds into a full system instead of just pieces. So the visual language that we're using here, um, and this is always a big slide. So this is uh, what will eventually become like a brand standard manual, right? Um, yeah. Is it will help inform, is I'm telling uh, another designer or I'm telling the client, these are the ingredients that we're using. These are the ingredients we're using to create your dish. This is the elements that we use that become your voice, right? And so we're using the credit blocks. We're using ellipsis, ellip, an ellipsis, my goodness. Uh, gold foil texture, silver foil texture. Um, punch outs, which is using those credit blocks to kind of punch out photos. And then we're using and playing with the extreme width with those dots. Uh, we saw it here when we were building out that identifier that hopefully though any two words could be there and people would think about the credit awards because of that element of the extreme width. And really what we're doing here is we're creating mental checkpoints for people so that they won't, uh, they won't need to see a logo. They'll be able to see any of these elements used together and they'll know, oh, this is a visual language, right? Much like, uh, we'll trace this back to ancient Egypt. You guys see something uh, carved that looks like a hieroglyphic, you think back to ancient Egypt. We wanna create that for our viewers and for our clients. Then when you see these elements used together, it's a visual language that we're creating for this brand. So next up, we move into some applications, and this is where we really start to show off how this brand identity system works together, how it all comes together, and how it all works uh, in different pieces. So this is kind of uh, the straightforward, using that scroll, kind of playing with the top and bottom eternal scroll of the credits. And then playing around with some applications here of uh, maybe on a bus stop, showing how just the ellipsis can be broken out. 
right? And it's still communicating the credit awards. It still feels like the credit awards. And that's the biggest thing is you want the voice to stay consistent and you want this brand to feel like it is uh, consistent. So some more applications. Uh, this is a great example of breaking apart a system and saying, okay, let's take the context of an award show and start plugging in and breaking apart these different pieces. And so super simple, the content blocks in the ellipsis that we've been using everywhere else what if instead of a red carpet, we had a black carpet and we rolled credits on the entire black carpet, right? That it's something that's a nice touch that just helps to tell that story a little better and starts to further that brand for the client. Next, looking at some business cards, um, our key messaging, welcome to the Z list. We aren't the A list or the V list. We are straight up on the Z list. Uh, and then playing around with some of these elements here Oh, I don't have a mouse. Uh, underneath there of the type layout being on those columns, right? They were playing around with center alignment. Um, yes, Emily, thanks for following me on Instagram. I did post some sneak peeks last night. Uh, so playing around with kind of breaking these elements apart to create, and you can see that it goes together in a whole bunch of different ways. So next, uh, super hopefully easily, we've broken into a signage system. Again, this isn't groundbreaking. This isn't something that uh, is having to have decisions each time. The goal of a good brand identity system is that we're answering all the questions. What should a toilet sign look like? What should a marquee look like? We've answered all those questions with this slide here. We've told them, here's your visual language. Here is how you communicate. And so when we say, how should a bathroom sign look? Or how should an overarching sign look? Well, let's play and combine the idea of the extreme width with some of that gold foil. And that's where we land with something like here, that's at the top there, that we're playing with that extreme width, a little bit of that gold foil, that rounded edge for the content block, and then even that cutoff for the eternal scroll. That's creating little details like this help inform. These could have been sharp cornered signs, but instead we want them to be rounded to better match our brand, to match those content bubbles. Uh, so it really is about creating those elements that all fit together. Hello, Sa Sahil? Sahil, yeah, hello. And my day. Oh, hello, hello, my day. Uh, so something else that I love to do is think about when a brand system is built out as elements, I will try to build out a font for that client. Um, because I do make typefaces, check them out on my website. Um, I love to build out and use that tool, but in a completely different way. And so what I've done for this client is I've built out a variable font for the credit awards using these uh, content blocks and using the ellipsis. So I've assigned different widths of content blocks to each key. So the Q makes that size, the W, the E, um, and I've assigned a different width to each key. And then each of the number keys will give you that number of ellipses points. So that if uh, as the client, you need to go into Microsoft Word and make a, uh, make a graphic at the last minute, as a designer, that kills my heart. But also as a designer, my job is to facilitate and create a system that's best for your brand. And so I'll create a variable font so that they could type QW5RT and it would create a nice branded system block so that they could create their own graphics and kind of work with this. Um, this is something that I'll give people the app over um, or they'll work in uh, Photoshop Express or I know that they're working on their phones and so I try to facilitate clients to the best of my ability. Um, I always do the test of could my mom do this? And if she could, that probably means that we've addressed a lot of the problems that uh, the organization will be addressing with or having with the brand identity system. And also, can you build it in PowerPoint? I know that's like every designer that gets some kind of like file from PowerPoint, you're like, I'm dying. <laughs> but guys, in this brand identity system, we need to be thinking about, they might build it in PowerPoint. Let's make sure that they're not gonna do it wrong. <laughs> and so trying to build a very, very core to this brand identity system. Yeah, just load this font, uh, load the credit awards font into uh, PowerPoint and you can type out your letters, you can choose the ellipsis and you can create your own branded graphics in PowerPoint if you need to. So moving on to things like social applications. And again, this is all about showing how this 
brand system works together. Um, using just simple photography, using, uh, again, some of simple photography and overlaying that, uh, those content blocks, changing out those words even. Um, there, some dancers are hanging out backstage. Uh, change that instead of saying, you know, credit wars, it just says dance, dance. Um, these captions are super fun. You can't read them, they're small. Uh, I think that one is, sorry, that one is a Fall Out Boy quote because uh, it had a like little throwback. And then the other one is a POD quote from the song Boom because he's holding a boom mic. I was up at 12.30 last night laughing my face off writing that caption. So I love you all. Uh, also, we show how it looks in social. And again, it's not just about, and yes, I can present this in Adobe XD, I'm still learning. I have not used Adobe XD very much. Uh, it's a great program for this and would be great for this. Um, and so this brand identity system, I wanna show that it's not gonna be kind of just pure chaos. I'm gonna say, hey, on your social, this system is best used in the vertical alignment. It's an element that we like to use. And so in this vertical alignment, what if we posted in threes and that vertical in the middle is always branded. It's always in those content blocks. It's always using that text. Uh, and then it just keeps that eternal scroll that as you go through the Instagram, uh, it really turns into those scrolling credits. So again, it's thinking about telling that story, creating that visual language. Um, all right, so let's look here. I spent a little bit of time last night um, writing copy. If you are a designer and you are in school, take a copywriting class, take a public relations class, learn to write, because if you can write your own content, you're gonna be good. You're gonna be golden. So uh, I spent a lot of time writing all this content last night and I thought it'd be great to present to the client Here's maybe what a commercial could be uh, if you're running it for, to give a tone, a sense of the tone. And usually I won't narrate through these. I won't have music on these. It will be just visual to help them understand the brand system. So I'm gonna roll this for you guys uh, and you guys can just watch along. And I'm gonna kind of, I'm actually gonna roll out of the way so you guys can watch, watch oh as it is. Rolling away, <laughs> yes. Here we go. Okay. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Dun, oh. dun, dun. Oh. Magic, magic. So that's a great example of, uh, of a brand identity system that if you can show it and we didn't have to talk at all, but in your guys' heads, you were reading, you had a voice in your head. And as a brand identity designer, and as we've been working these few days, I know what that voice was. I know and I've put that voice in your head as a designer, uh, that it's a little sassy, that as we got to certain parts, it was kind of like, these aren't the A-list stars, but this is where our show starts. And then that big headline saying, welcome to the Z-list, right? Using that am amazing Dunbar type. So it's all about creating this brand identity and creating, uh, using these elements to really play around with how to communicate the story. Um, and. Cyril, Cyril Design, yes. Uh, this is the mock-up that he did last night. Oh. So he was watching the stream yesterday and he hit me up on Instagram and he said, hey, I've animated a little thing. Can I send it to you? And I was like, yes, that's so amazing. Uh, so if you guys are inspired by this, please like go work on it, um, do your thing. It's gonna be awesome. So let's roll this. And you guys go follow him on Instagram. His, his work is amazing. Cool. Right, super fun. And then it animates oh. in, right? So it's just a nice little, uh, nice little animation there. Again, incorporating the scrolling credits, but then it drops back in, hits that bright gold, and now we're moving. Now we're onto the welcome to the Z list. Hit them with that credit awards. Uh, amazing execution, and again, building out that brand identity system. He understood how it communicates, how those elements go together, and it's really e easy to remix and scale when you have good, uh, when you have a good kind of foundation. Great job. Very good. Great job, Cyril. All right, so we got about five minutes left to our brand submission deadline. That is the end of our uh, presentation that we would do for the client. And then we would talk about questions. So if you guys have questions, uh, I think some had come through. Uh, oh, look, we're at the awards. Oh my goodness. And I I'm saw this image. Elixir. I saw this image last night looking for, <laughs> looking for red carpets. You are. <laughs> guys, we are the credit awards today. All right.
It's very welcome to the credit awards. Welcome to the credit awards. It we is our are honor to have you here, here at the credit awards. Let us know if you have any questions. There were some like joke client from hell questions. Oh yes, like, if you guys have um, questions. I like the black and white, but can you make it red? Yes, and so actually, let's go to that because that's a big thing. So let's imagine that the client said, well, we actually want it to be a uh, super bright green, right? I can come back to this visual language and even come back to uh, the voice and say that we want it to be classic and organic and energetic and relaxed and sassy um, within this system because it is so stark. Using that green, uh, green is technically a color that's very vibrant, that's very bright, that's very kind of intense. And because we want it to be a little more approachable and we want it to be relaxed, I think the green might have too much energy. We do want it to be energetic, but I think that pairing this simple system that we're using with a bright green may take it into being chaotic. And so that's why having uh, this kind of definition of the voice is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And then matching that to a visual language to say all those things that we talked about and all those elements actually translate visually into something like this. This page is telling the same story that we have all agreed on. What if they say, we really want a script font because we just love that style? Yeah, again, we would go back um, and I would even sometimes go uh, and say, okay, let's look at uh, some of the applications. So these business cards where it has that welcome to the Z list and then the type down there. And I would maybe even actually take them to Adobe Fonts mm -hmm. and say, think about the voice that we have talked about. Um, you can go to, yeah. Okay. Just type in yep. fonts. Uh, think, think about the voice that we've talked about. Think about uh, kind of who we want the brand to be. And then I'm gonna show you some script fonts and I'm gonna have it say, uh, welcome to the Z list. Oh, you can't do it that way. Oh, oops. But I am go definitely to doing the browse, wrong go to browse fonts at the top. Oh. Or you can do yeah. it that way, yeah. Yeah, so you so, would show them, like, is this yeah. really what so, you want? So I would show them, and it wouldn't be a see how wrong this is. It would be a, okay, let's look at this, and let's take a moment, and we'll read it in our head. And when you read it in your head, do you feel like the voice that's in your head is communicating the message that you want to communicate for your brand? I think that we want it to be a little more bold, a little more brazen. This feels a little more approachable and soft. And so this might not be the right description. Uh, and we're always open to have those conversations, to talk with the client. But yeah. a lot of times it's separating their preference from the purpose of the project. And that's why we agree on the goals. So we say, if the purpose of this brand is to communicate this one way, then your preference and our preference is going to have to take a back seat and we're both gonna to have to compromise to solve whatever that problem is to address the purpose of the project. And yes, green would interact with probably Monster Energy Drink. I agree <laughs> with that. Um, how often do you concede things to the client? Like if they say, no, I absolutely wanna use this font. Yeah, I think uh, there is a lot of asking why and if, if we can't agree on a why, a lot of times we'll have a lot of continued conversations and either help them understand why this might not work within the system or uh, the reasoning that we have behind a why, or we'll hear their why and really try to get to the heart of why is this such a big issue? Like, what are you trying to get at here? What's the actual goal of this? Yeah. Um, and usually it's just a lot of conversation and communication of figuring out why and then finding a compromise in the middle. So we're under a minute to submit your portfolios. And if you didn't get a chance during this segment, you can submit for next segment or the one after. So don't despair. Your portfolio still has a chance of being yep. reviewed. There um, are so many. Atif asked how you got inspired. Well, you did have that um, slide in your deck showing yes. the old movie um, credits yep. and, and old movie titles. Yeah, and I, I tend to uh, building out brand identity systems, I tend to be very inspired by old systems that have been around forever, like Egyptian hieroglyphics. Um, and the new systems that are coming out, like the work that Michael Beirut is doing for Slack and uh, Verizon, that it's things that you see the logo and you think, okay, yeah, like it's, it's there, it's a logo. But yeah. a brand identity system isn't about the logo, it's about the entire experience and creating a visual language. Mm -hmm. Abu Bakr, you can check out the first day replay because 
Andrew did the gold and silver textures from scratch. Yes, we made so. them from scratch. We were just using clipping masks and Illustrator, super easy. Um, and again, they are on my Instagram for free if you'd like to grab them. But I would rather have you uh, go and learn because then you can make your own textures. And you know what? If you want, you could have a green foil texture. Do it. Uh, while I'm pulling up the portfolios, because we did choose two, <gasps> um, but while I do that, we did have a question about pricing. So I think I'll, everybody wants to ask that question. Oh, when yeah. you're presenting this to the client, how does pricing figure in? Like where in the process does that come? Yeah, does so come before this? yeah, at Black Roses, we try to talk about pricing as soon as possible. Um, it's something that because we are a value-based pricing, we like to show here is maybe some of our past work, here is the value that we're going to bring to your business. Uh, because with a brand identity system like this, we aren't just building out a logo. We aren't delivering an asset. We are creating the voice of your company. We are giving you something that will exist for hopefully the next 10 years. And especially with the brand identity systems that I like to do that will scale eternally and turn into different things and morph and change. And so we're answering questions that we would be consulting for uh, in the far future. Um, and so, yeah, so, so we try to talk about money as soon as possible. Um, we try to look at the value that it will add to the company. Um, and we also love to do um, work with nonprofits every now and then. We I know that there's a lot of designers that don't think you should work for free. Um, we're actually working with a local homeless shelter uh, because we wanted one of our first projects as a brand experience agency to be something that gives back, to use our brand identity systems, mm -hmm. to kind of build something to see if we can help and make a dent uh, in the in the area of homelessness. That's great. Yeah, so if you want more info, again, blackroses.com. Um, if you want to shoot us an email, uh, there's an email form on there. You can follow us on uh, social media, reach out, and we'd love to talk to you. Awesome. Yeah. So we're ready to look at our first portfolio. Let's look at portfolios. Yeah. So the first one is from Emily. So if we can go. Oh yes, oh, we gotta go to we space. We have to go to space, I forgot. Let's oh my jump gosh. On okay, we'll be right moon. back. Don't worry. Oh, oh, hello. We did it, we're in space, guys. Uh, Is everyone still here? We did it, TARS, TARS. Oh yeah, we could have like, uh, gosh, what was that Matthew McConaughey movie where he's like spinning and he's like, TARS, TARS. <laughs> that was my moment. That's where we are, guys, for portfolio review. We are flying through space. Um, yeah, I forgot that we had to go to space, which was a big problem because that's obviously, you can't review a portfolio from Earth. No, of course not. Of no, course not. You have to be, you know, this helps us think and, you know. It's true. Assess the portfolio. It's true. Oh my goodness. All right. Are you ready to go back? I, no. Oh no. I'm, I, there we go. <laughs> oh yeah. This hair is, there we go. All right. We're it wasn't working good it, guys. for your hair. We're doing it. Yeah. We'll just let it, we'll let it fly. Okay. So when we look into portfolios, I want to give a little bit of context. Uh, I'm going to be kind of be talking about uh, what it's communicating. It's not going to be a lot of preference on this. I'm going to be talking a lot about purpose um, and looking at the work and seeing uh, kind of breaking down what you're trying to communicate. So we're going to try to get technical with these uh, so that we're kind of out of opinion zone. So Emily Care is first. Hi, Emily. Yay, congrats. Laguna Gal, SoCal, what's up? Yeah. Roman says ground control to major Ari. Oh yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna get this off so I can see. So Emily is from Laguna Miguel, awesome. So she has her little bio here. Graphic designer based in Orange County, specializing in branding, visual identities, and marketing strategies. Cool. All things that we Those have Those are all been things we've talked about. about, yeah, a lot. Other areas include photo manipulation, kinetic typography, and social media. Ooh. What does kinetic, kinetic typography type. mean? Kinetic type is like a moving type. Uh, like animated? Yeah, like animated type, yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, uh, a lot of stretchy letters and... There was the there was a season a couple years ago that it was a lot of like quotes from speakers that like would pop up and stuff. 
All right. All right. So she has one of her projects here, logo and branding. The client is broker. Oh, this is so great. Okay. So Look, here's what I love about Dunbar. this. I was going to say, so there's what I love about this and the use of type is type is such a powerful tool to communicate for your brand. And we're literally using the same font here. She's just using a different variation and combining it with different colors and giving us different information so that it translates to something completely different, right? That we yeah. wouldn't read this at all like we read the credit awards, but it's technically no. the same font. Um, yeah. Yeah, That's let's awesome. let's take a look at And that oh, also shows elements. you you could use one typeface for a whole system and use different variations yep. of it. Yep. And still have that difference. This is really cool. Oh, I love that. So this company is a financial applications that displays stock market trends. Cool. So yeah, I definitely I, get that from the... Yep, I, I definitely was trying to figure out what the story was and what it is. I, I love doing that of looking at a design <laughs> and trying to pick apart what it is before I read anything about it. And when we got to this image, I, I got it. I started to get it that I understood, oh, it's a broker, not just like, okay, what's BR? Is it like a fashion brand? Hmm. It felt like a little like refined. And then I'm like, oh, it's totally stock market. And I think the use of texture here is really well, really well done. Um, I think you're informing us that it is stock market by using that kind of grid. But I love how you've kind of uh, abstracted it mm -hmm. to become a pattern. I think that it yeah, adds a little bad. bit of character. Um, and I think your color Ooh. choices are are great. I think they're a little um, unconventional for what I would think about for this, but I think it works really well. It, to me, the color choices feel approachable. It's communicating uh, ease of use. It's communicating that something that wouldn't necessarily be um, for the full on Wall Street investor who's been there and experienced for, you know, however many years. It feels like someone that's like, oh, I kind of want to get into trading stocks and it feels very approachable. Yeah. This is great. Let's look at some other stuff. Emily says, thanks, Andrew, I'm a part of the designer meetups and friends with Peter. Yes, I remember you, Emily. So we, uh, Peter Del Tondo and I, do a Disneyland meetup the second Thursday of each month. If you want to come hang out, designer meetups uh, is our social channels we post on there. And, and you go to Disneyland. We go to Disneyland and it's a bunch of designers and we hang out and we talk about design and look Every at cool stuff. Every other Thursday? Disneyland. The second Thursday of each month. Oh, okay. So yeah, I was once like, a month. That's a lot of Disneyland. Yep. All right, let's not read anything about this one. Let's look at it, and okay. then we'll try to pick out what it might be for. Fresco Kyoto. Okay, Fresco Kyoto. Uh, women's wear okay. apparel. Yep, yep, and I immediately, I immediately got with your type choice. Uh, I got, it feels Southern California uh, boutique kind mm. of uh, fashion. I love what you've done with the K. I'm absolutely obsessed with what you've done with the K and the Y. The way that the angles, sorry, are perpendicular to each other is amazing. And then the way that you've played with the K and the Y also doing this, I'm I'm dead. I'm literally dying. Uh, it's it's so good. And I think that it, it communicates Southern California to me. It communicates boutique because it feels handcrafted. It doesn't feel like typeset that you have done. It uh, feels like something you've created from scratch. And I really, really like that. Yeah, it looks like she created these letters. Yeah, um, and I, I could even see you playing with a mark somewhere in there with that K and that Y. It's just gorgeous. I know, maybe it can be called K, Y, something. Yeah. Fresco I've tried Kyoto. to. Oh, it's a five piece indie band from Australia. Oh. And um, she created this logo design in an effort to update their current design, which is a serif typeface. That's awesome. Yep, it definitely feels yeah. handcrafted. It feels unique. It feels like it, it could shift in my brain from a fashion brand to like an indie band very, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, I love it. it. It's gorgeous. The O's are super good too. They just have a little bit of character. Um, to me, type always has the most character in the R, the S, and the K. That's what I look for when I'm looking for fonts. Um, those are where I find the voice, and I love this. Yeah. Hi, Eric. Cool. And yes, um, we're thinking deep. Trelawney Farm Stables. Oh, look at this logo. The horse oh, and fun. the clover. That's cool. Oh, I love I love the application sketch that you have there of that placement. Yeah. Um, I was trying to understand a little bit of 
where it lived and I wasn't quite connecting where the logo would live and how it would kind of look together on something. Uh, and it that helped a lot. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous to yeah, think of it being so stamped into simple. leather. It's so simple. Like, it, you don't have to spend that much time on this sketch, but it totally, like, our mind can extrapolate exactly what's going to happen. Yep. Could you scroll up just a little bit? Um, my only feedback on this, I would love to see maybe an exploration of some of these pieces being broken out to build a little bit more of an identity system. Mm -hmm. So maybe breaking out the clover, breaking out the horse head, breaking out just that mark, um, having a version that doesn't have the type in there. I think it's a really strong mark and you might not need that type on top. Uh, yeah. Maybe it sits under the chin of the horse, kind of nestles in there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I like that mark. It's a really cool idea and I think it communicates um, some kind of luck, like a lucky horse that you'd like bet on your lucky horse. Yeah. I like that story a lot. You can also use like a horseshoe is, is a symbol of luck. So maybe you want to play with that oh, that's symbol true. too. And another thing I'm noticing is that your illustration, your outline of this logo, the stroke is a lot thicker than the type. So it kind of drowns the type. So maybe you want to think about a bolder typeface or just um, making sure that those strokes are in harmony with each other. Yep. All right, so we have these CDs. Is there something that jumps out at you on uh, Let's look at the Rhino stuff. Rhino. <laughs> That's, yeah, <laughs> this feels Rhino gorgeous. web design. Oh, look at the, oh. oh. the horn is so the good. Horn. Oh, and then she does this here. That's great. Really cool. Okay, she's macho. You can find that on Adobe Fonts. Cool, yeah, I well. feel like this is communicating, the colors especially feel upscale. I would relate those to some kind of uh, like law firm or consultancy. They're a little bit muted, but they feel like rich in tone. Um, yeah, I'd the colors. <laughs> be careful of the O, of that turning into a G. Um, I definitely think incorporating the horn is something that, again, uh, we talked about icons, indexes, and symbols. It's that icon that like tells us it's a horn that relates us back to Rhino, um, especially with it reading ring a little bit. Um, maybe play around with that horn actually going over to the R. Um, the way that, that the leg of the R comes down, it could be a nice swoop for that horn yeah. to kind of come in to incorporate. Um, or maybe even the... Uh, yeah, maybe even in the eye. Um, I love the idea of that subtle nod though. That's great. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Um, and then we'll just look at her website, I think, because she does link to her website and I oh, wanna yeah. see um, what how she's laid everything out. Oh, I love your little hand done mark. That's so yeah, fun. That's cool. I, I am I am the worst at hand lettering, like the worst that there possibly could be. Um, <laughs> but I love the character that's behind some of the hand lettering stuff. Um, it just yeah. like tells such a story that I feel like I understand you a little bit better. Yeah, that's great. I like that a lot. The only thing I would say, um, I am a hand letter. The E, just be careful with that because it reads more like an E if your entrance stroke is a little higher. So if it starts higher, then you get the E. If it starts too low, you're just getting a loop or like kind of an I shape. So you're at the borderline where I can totally see the E, but just be careful for everyone watching, like make sure everything's readable yep. as well as organic. Oh, Christopher DeCaro, hello, welcome. <laughs> and yes, the Orange County crew is here. We are at so Southern California. It's all crew, OC, Emily and Andrew. We're here, the hoods are up next. The hoods, yep. you're taking over. So thanks so much, Emily. I thanks, know it's Emily. not easy to show your work in front of all these people, but it was really great to see your designs. Yeah, big takeaways for you, Emily. I think your type is incredible. I'd keep refining that, keep pushing it. Um, and then I think building out these ideas that you're having into more full stories, um, I think that it's there and I think they're really good ideas. I'd love to see more of how that applies and more ways you can kind of break apart these cool ideas you're having uh, into telling that story a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. So, Hypno Agent. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. So, from Utah. Hello. Oh, well, it's probably um, very cold there. Who is the hypno agent, it says here. From the headquarters located in the hypno dimension, Scott Peterson is a seasoned graphic artist and creative who specializes in typography, branding, illustration, and print materials. 
Mr. Peterson. Cool. I always wondered what your name was, so now I know. Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys. Oh! Cool. <laughs> Wiggly type. A tour poster I made just for fun. It's for my favorite band, Arctic Monkeys. Oh, wow. the texture. Wow, look at the textures. This, see, so I am so much not of an illustrator uh, that when I see stuff like this, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm just gonna close my computer and I think I think we're done with design. This is, <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, I love the textures that you're using. Um, I love the composition. The wiggly yeah. type that was happening at the top, like I, I was super into it. Yeah, let's look at this and then we'll go back to the top. Wow, this detail is really cool. Yeah, the halftone textures that you're using give a nice kind of newsprint uh, effect. And yep. it's great that you show this process. It's really engaging for a potential client uh, to moving. see. Woo! Um, oh my goodness. Oh, here, look, I'm the illustration. <laughs> It's me. I am the Arctic <laughs> monkey. <laughs> You're twinning so hard twinning. right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I really love uh, the, especially that bleed over edge that you're using. The the way that you've done the half tones. Again, we talked about this a little bit today. The streams in the stream uh, using values of light and dark, and then kind of making through uh, making the. Uh, values stand through with that half tone is gorgeous. Yeah. This is so cool, the wiggly. Yep. How did you do the wiggles? Let uh, us know. Yeah, let what us you... know. There's uh, there's probably a couple ways. So you could do it. You could literally print it and scan it. You could use some uh, use some uh, distort brushes in mm -hmm. Illustrator. You could do a you could do a uh, displacement map in Photoshop. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. And again, what's great about Adobe products. There's technically probably a right way, but there's like 90 ways to do it. Figure out what works for you and yeah. do that. He says, I used Kyle Webster's brushes, like the halftone brush and oh, stuff. Oh, yep. That's really cool. Kyle Webster's awesome. Can we look at the we'll be right back one? We'll be right back. Well, this yes. looks pretty familiar to what we've been doing. Oh, this is great. Frantic Monkey presents Frantic Ween. Like Halloween. Yep. I love this. Frantic Ween, a Halloween event for the Frantic Monkey Twitch channel. These are the title cards and social media ads for the special month long event. Great, super on brand with what we're working Whoa, on today. Oh, this uh, is so cool. Yeah, and again, uh, people in chat, we talked about it a whole bunch of times. This is a lot of layers. And when we look at this, I want you guys to not look at it and be like, wow, this is cool. It is, it's really cool. Look at it and try to pick out the layers that he's using. Try to deconstruct it for your own use. So we're seeing there's that half tone, there's a background that looks like it has some kind of texture on it. There's the shadow behind the type. Then we see the type. Then on top of that, there's some noise that's yeah. happening. And then it there's like another texture. Yeah, there's another wrinkly texture on top of the type. And so as you look at that and start to uh, pull things into layers, you'll start to understand a little bit better how to stack those, how to work those through. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Really cool. Is there more? Did you do the lettering yourself? Oh yeah, did you do, it looks like custom lettering. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Love that. Again, playing with the vignette that we played around with today, a little bit of that noise. I um, love that with King Kong. Yep. And again, guys, it's super easy to look at this and just be like, oh, it's a texture that you multiply on top of everything. But this really looks like it is different layers. You can see that there are little white specks that are actually over the black, but then there's another layer of texture behind that. That's really where it goes from uh, being a flat design into something that feels like it has depth, that feels like it has texture, is having things in front and behind things interacting with each other. Yeah. And then Twitter web banners. Great. Oh, cool. Here's another lettering thing. So fun. Whoa. Badges. Love it. Yep. yep, based it off old monster movie posters. I totally oh, get that. Oh, yeah, you did yep. the lettering. Great Creature job. From the, Lost, from the Black Lagoon. I think you did a great job of making the lettering super readable, but also has a lot of character. Yes, and again, we talked about it. I love to look at the R's and the S's to find the mm -hmm. character, and that R to me, um, and this is where it gets into kind of uh, creating that voice. This R isn't just like horror. This R, when you read it, feels like horror. Yes, and like it has that voice, like it gives you a little bit of that. Horror Almost games. like you're having to like, yes, like slide in. Yeah, so it just, it feels. Little. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I like that you spaced everything erratically, like 
GA is super close, then the M is taking a wide stance, and then ES is super close. It's like they're afraid of the M. Yep. And we talked about it today, blurring things is a great way to make stuff look old. All of your type that's typeset over there has a nice little blur on it. Um, uh, that's awesome. I got lost. Okay. Gorgeous. So we, we're running out of time, but we can look at uh, one of his other things. Dance Little Liar. Dance, Illustrated dance. custom typography made for fun. Oh, cool. So Better. you show your process. How do you think so far? Uh, what do you think so far about the way he's presenting his projects? Because oh, that's I think another it's great. Yeah. important thing. I love to see the behind the scenes. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times, and we've talked about this a few times on stream, for me, it's not so much about how it looks as opposed to how it works. And so I love seeing a little bit of the process. I love seeing a little bit of uh, how it builds out and like stuff like this, showing this is the real world application of how this graphic would live in the real world or would exist within a system. Yeah. Um, I love that you're kind of breaking things up. It's not the same thing over and over. Um, I really, really like this. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, and again, you're using, uh, go back up just a little bit to that one, yeah. So we talked about these the first day, if you wanna watch the replay, using indexes. And indexes are elements that give us information. Here, he's got indexes saying, look here, right? That's giving you those action line. He's got the pops that are coming out that are saying, this is important. He's got the uh, lightning bolts coming out that are saying, mm -hmm. it's electric. And so those are all things uh, that are basically constructing a visual sentence for us that you're using very, very well here um, to create a kind of narrative as we look at this box. Yeah, that's really cool. I like how you took a lot of close-up pictures and showed all the elements so that it's like we're holding the box. Yep. And then quickly, so he links to his website. We can just check that out. Everything's really cohesive. Gorgeous. Can we look at the eye? I think that that's what he's using as a logo. I just want to see. Oh, these are all the logos. Nice. Oh, I love, yeah, we can't see the eye in detail, but... I love seeing like this, stuff like this, that you have a branded voice for yourself. I understand very mm. clearly who you are, what your brand is, and then you can also present, here's what the clients are as well, and I can communicate on behalf of them. Yeah. Um, and so that's something that I have to face is, here's what I look like as Andrew Hockrattle, and then we communicate on behalf of our clients at Black Roses uh, in a different way and kind of create those voices for them. Yeah. Uh, but I love the voice that you've created for yourself. Here's Even the way logo. that you're mocking up and have the case number on there, what you're doing, like it, it just tells a great story. Yeah. So great job, Emily and Hypno Agent Scott. Amazing stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending your portfolios in and to everyone that sent their portfolio. I know Thank that you. if I'm showing my portfolio to someone, I'm going to do some last minute work on it. Yeah. So I'm sure that the prompt also made you like update some stuff and maybe that's all it is. Maybe today you updated some things and you felt confident about showing it and that's half the battle. Yep. Being able to say like, okay, I'm ready for people to view my stuff and get it out there. Yeah, and hopefully you saw something we did on stream and you were like, oh, I wanna try that. And yeah. maybe it didn't work out. Maybe it was like a com complete like disaster, but it's not a failure. You learned something from it, it's a win. Uh, yeah. So even if you tried something and it didn't work out, keep trying, keep breaking things, keep trying new stuff. So let's, for the last minute, we yes. can show um, Andrew's screen. Just give a, a little last image of what you've done and yep. we can direct everyone. So for those of you that joined later or want to recap everything that we did, make sure that you watch the replays. You can see the replays tab. Make it big so that they yep. can see it. There we go. Um, yeah. Oh, we'll you can see the side. replays tab up at the top above where you're watching right now on Behance and see all of the previous videos. And also make sure you follow Andrew on Instagram because on his bio, he yep. has all the assets. He has this deck, he has his foils. Yep. He has information about Black Roses, his agency. Yeah, and I'll be posting this full case study and this full uh, proposal that we went through today on my Behance. If you guys wanna follow me on there, I'll post it on my Instagram as well. Um, I'll put it out there. So can kind of look at it um, and I'll make some notes about kind of how we like to pitch these brand identity systems. But thanks so much for hanging out, guys. Um, this remind awesome. me, when are the credit awards? Oh yeah, the credit it's, awards. They're um, happening uh, February, I think, 8th. I think tomorrow, tomorrow night. <laughs> tomorrow night. Are we ready? We, yeah, we're ready, guys. We got the brand system. Yeah, we're I have my gown out, ready. It's going to be great. It's, I'm not going to be wearing this. Don't look yep. at me right now. But I'm going to be nice so thing. glammed up We tomorrow. have a nice, a nice brand identity system that if we needed to, we could probably pull off 
yeah. at least some stuff for the awards we tomorrow night. We could print some stuff out today. Easily. Like make some signs. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you everyone who joined and make sure you stay tuned because we have oh, a yeah. full day ahead. The hoods are coming this up. This is just the beginning. So the hoods are coming up. They're working on their brand identity as well. And um, this is the last day. So if you have your portfolio to submit, make sure you submit it in the next couple segments and maybe you'll be reviewed. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Thanks, yeah. Andrew, for being Thanks here. Thanks, so much fun. It was great having great. you in San Francisco and learning about your process. Yeah, it was so. fun to share. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.